Welcome to Chapter 2 of Head First JavaScript Programming, and congrats on completing Chapter 1. In Chapter 1, we used a broad brush to cover many aspects of JavaScript, like how it fits in the web page ecosystem, and how it's constructed of statements, and how we can use loops and make decisions about which statements are executed. We even talked about how JavaScript fits into your page with the script tag, and the different ways of doing that. With Chapter 2, we're going to take a different approach. Now that you've had some JavaScript background, there's another aspect of using JavaScript we're going to focus on, and that is general programming techniques. How do you take a problem or application idea and break it down into something you can code in JavaScript? So meet the Battleship game. We're sure most of you have been exposed to the board game version of this game. And what we're going to do is mostly focus on the logic of how we'd implement this game in JavaScript. Now, don't get us wrong. We're also interested in the graphical side of this game because later we'll build a fully graphical version of the Battleship game, which uses a form for input and displays our hits and misses in the web page with a cool Battleship design. But for now, we're going to start simple with the game logic and a super simple interface. To do that, we're first going to take you through a high-level design using a flowchart and pseudocode to try to get at what we want to code in JavaScript. We're then going to take you step-by-step -step through our design to write the code and explain each step. And it's not going to be all show and tell. At crucial steps, we're going to let you work out the coding. Now, one thing we're going to do is begin to get away from using alert and console.log and actually put our game output in the page. To do this, we're going to use a little ready-bake code. And that's code we'll throw in that works and you can just use, but we won't teach it. We'll get to all the specifics of that code later in the book. Jumping into all the details of how to write code into the page would be a big distraction, and we want to make sure you've got the basics of coding down first. We are going to use a built-in function called prompt that you can use in any browser to get input from the user. We're also going to get into some of the more advanced Boolean operators and conditionals in the chapter, like how do we piece together more advanced logic operations? And of course, we've got a couple of puzzles in here too. We've got a couple of accountants who are trying their hand at code, and one of them isn't so great at it. So it's going to be your job to help figure out who's got the correct code. We'll also give you some advice on how to avoid embarrassing coding practices with your conditions. Now, one thing our initial code doesn't tackle is randomly placing the ship on the board. So we're going to spend some time talking about how to generate random numbers using some built-in functions. And finally, there's something wrong with our code. Can you find it? Will we fix it? It's a cliffhanger. And of course, you're going to have to keep reading to find out. So the main thing we want you to get out of this chapter is understanding the process of taking an idea for a game to a high level design to an actual implementation in JavaScript. Our implementation is very basic, no graphics and only the most basic interaction with the user. But that's a great way to begin to learn how to write real JavaScript programs. As always, don't forget the bullets and crossword before you finish out the chapter. Then get some good rest for your brain before the next chapter, because in chapter three, we're going to dive headfirst into functions. We've used a few of JavaScript built-in functions in chapter two, but in chapter three, you'll find out what functions actually are, as well as how to make your own. So we'll see you again soon.